This is Track Talk at the Big M. Hey, did you know that Dave Miller represented the United States in the 1999 World Driving Championships down in Australia? He wound up finishing fifth. Sylvain Fillion took the whole pot there. We'll ask Dave a little bit about that. Dave Miller is the only driver in history to win a million dollar Breeders' Crown Race. The only driver ever to win seven million dollars, his first two Meadowlands seasons combined. And he was the first driver in all of North America to reach three million this year. As we sit right now, he's a leading money winning driver in all North America. Dave Miller joins us. Dave, how are you doing? Yeah, fine, thank you. How long before, you're from Ohio, how long before you thought about coming to the Meadowlands and you actually did come to the Meadowlands, would you say? Uh, it was probably close to four or five years before I finally got up, got up enough nerve to come out here and try it. So you, you're very successful. You were kicking it around for quite a while and because you're winning a lot of races. You're the leading driver in Ohio for a number of years. So was it something that was gnawing at you a little bit? Well, uh, you know, no, I was, I was very happy at home and uh, things were going great. You know, it's one of them deals where you hate to leave is something that's so good, you know, but uh, uh, when the opportunity came up to come out here, I, I, I took a shot then. Well, Dave won his first race back in 1981, the first 100 win season back in 88, then you started hitting the top 10 regularly back in 1991. First $5 million year came when your Meadowlands uh, season got underway back in 1999, and now you're a regular here on the Meadowlands circuit. What kind of adjustments do you have to make? When you come to the Meadowlands, you're driving on smaller tracks, 5 eighths a lot. What kind of adjustments were made by Dave Miller, or if there were any, on the mile track here and racing against these kind of drivers? Uh, well, well, for me, uh, uh, the biggest adjustment was uh, getting to know uh, the horses. It's kind of deceiving to see the lines on a horse uh, uh, compared to the ones I was used to driving at home. You know, they, they looked uh, to be very good, and they would end up being just average and uh, maybe overdrive them or... Uh, uh, you know, make mistakes like that. Uh, it was just it was kind of tough to get to know the horses and know the track. Questions and comments, of course, are welcome to Dave Miller, one eight seven seven cn 8 live Of course, we'd like to hear from everybody out there. How long before you felt like, hey, you belong here at the Meadowlands? You're, you're one of the Meadowlands drivers. Uh, it's, there's still nights I, I don't feel like I belong. Uh, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't for a while. Uh, you know, after uh, you start getting drives and uh, start doing well, and, uh, you, know, you start feeling more comfortable, but uh, it, it, it took me a while. Uh, like I said, there's still nights that I feel like I should be in Ohio, but uh, um, just got to keep plugging away at it. Well, leading money winning horse in North America is Magician. Uh, how did you wind up with the driver Magician? Um, I just got, uh, got lucky. Uh, uh, Brian Allen had raced him as a three-year-old, and uh, he was down on him here his first start, and uh, didn't make it or didn't show up or what happened, and uh, the girl gave me the call on him. Okay, Magician last week in the Classic Series, uh, he looks like he had a walk in the park there. Tell, take us through the race here. This is up in Canada, and he goes 127 and 1 to the three-quarter. Take it from here. Yeah, he, uh, he got to the front pretty easy, and then he, he got a real soft middle half. He got the next two, uh, next two quarters under uh, 29 seconds, and uh, that's basically all he needed. He had, had plenty left on the end of it. He just sprinted home when I asked him. Does Magician realize that Moneymaker's now retired? Because right here, this doesn't seem to be the com kind of competition he's used to facing him. <laughs> Uh, right now, he's, he's in his zone right now. He's, he's uh, on top of his game, that's for sure. And I know owner Bill Augustein had expressed an interest in going for that $250,000 bonus. He's going to race in all the classic legs, try to sweep it and go for the bonus. Uh, is that the, uh, the, the plan of attack? Yeah, you know, as long as he stays uh, healthy and sound, um, I'm sure he'll beat every leg. Last year, he, he got sick on us there uh, after the Maple Leaf, and he missed... Uh, last year, it didn't fill, only like two, two legs, and he missed one leg, so he wasn't eligible for the final. I believe that's how it went, and, uh, uh, but this year, knock on wood, he's been staying real healthy and uh, everything's been going good for him. Well, we're going to give everybody a chance to win dinner for two, one eight seven seven cn 8 live with our quiz, that's right, and it does involve Dave Miller, that's right. Can you remember who Dave drove in his first ever drive in the Meadowlands Pace? Dinner for two on the line. Special guest driver Dave Miller, and uh, we welcome your calls. We've got some uh, calls waiting, but uh, first off, Dave, You've got, uh, you've got the drive back on. He's all that. Speaking of long shots, you'll likely be a long shot. Uh, tell us about your chances in the Bears Creek with he's all that. Uh, I, I feel he, he drew a decent post there. Uh, um, he's, uh, he's pretty versatile. He can race either way. Uh, uh, probably uh, have a good shot. Uh, it's follow, it's follow some you know, live cover. I'm right, inside a, right outside of Matt Damon, which would be a nice horse to follow. So uh, well, Let's take a look at the field here. Uh, we've got the field coming up. and uh, who, Who's the horse to beat? I, I, I think uh, watching the replays uh, last week, uh, the two horse, uh, Gunda won the West. Uh, looked pretty amazing there last week with his big kick on the end of it, and then he drew good and uh, a good driver. Well, we've got a call. Uh, Joe.
Joe, you've got a question or maybe an answer for the uh, Bob Hayden quiz? I have a question for Dave. Okay. Um, I was just wondering, Dave, how you doing? Fine. Um, who do you consider the best horse you've ever driven? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, there's only one horse comes to, comes to my mind right now, uh, that trotter that Earl Cruz trains, magician. Uh, Dave, when you get off the bike, you speak to trainers about uh, the horses that, are, that, that you're, you're driving. Uh, what are some of the common suggestions you might make to a trainer to move a horse up, to step them up, to improve them? Well, usually if, uh, if they're not traveling right or if they seem to be a little sore, you know, make suggestions on uh, uh, re-rigging them, maybe, uh, you know, uh, bridle change or anything to try to help, help the horse out. Dave, do you need a marquee horse to get noticed? Uh, you probably were more or less in obscurity, kind of, until Falcon's Future back about eight, seven, eight years ago. Was that the kind of horse that kind of got you on the map? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you need a horse like him to uh, get you noticed. Uh, you know, you can, win a, you can win a lot of races, but as long as you don't, uh, I feel as long as you don't win any major stake races, you know, uh, you kind of get that rep, you know, just being a, uh, uh, you know, an overnight driver or whatever. Okay, Dave Miller's with us on Track Talk. Greg from Ocean, go ahead. Hi, Ken. Hi, Holly. Hi, Hi. Dave. Hi. Hey, Dave, um, you know, you're having a really great year this year, and I want to wish you a lot of success and continued success this year and hopefully uh, make it your best year ever. Do you have any goals for yourself, whether it be a Hamiltonian or Meadowlands Pace or maybe even the Hall of Fame one day? Do you have a goal set for Dave Miller that you want to achieve before your career is over? Yeah, uh, uh, the only race that I, I mean, uh, the Hamiltonian or anything like that would be, would be a dream, but... Uh, um, I'm really striving for the little brown jug. I'm from Dulo, or I'm from Ohio, you know, and uh, uh, that would be uh, that would be a big feather in my hat. I've been to a lot of jugs, and uh, actually, I win a heat of the jug, but uh, I'd like to win the whole thing one of these days. Luke Ouellette said that when catch drivers lose, they get blamed too much. When they win, they get too much credit. How do you feel about that? Uh, that's that's a lot of truth to that. There, you know, uh, uh, it's easy to point the finger. Uh, you know, it's a lot to go with it. You know, either way, winning or losing. New Regal Falcons in the open pace tonight. Uh, tell us about New Regal Falcon, and uh, well, are you still driving them? Yeah, I am, I am oh, this good. week, yeah. I mean, um, there a couple months ago, I, I felt he could have, you know, went with the Opens, no problem. Uh, he was on such a, he was so sharp there for a while, but uh, he had a foot problem, and uh, uh, just really, uh, you know, he had an abscess, and it popped out, but uh, now the separation, and he's just not dealing with uh, that too well. Uh, qualified uh, two weeks ago, pretty decent, but... Uh, the other night in, I guess, uh, Mohawk, he was back to left on the left line and uh, not steering very well. So uh, he's got to get, uh, get, get, get healthy and get sound again. All right. We'll see how he does tonight. Steve's on the line. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, Dave. Uh, you've had a pretty good meet this year. I was just wondering, um, I know you're driving. He's all that in the sixth race tomorrow. I was wondering if you're going to do anything different than you did from the last drive because it seems like you had him coming down the middle of the lane. They just couldn't keep him together. Are you going to try to get the, uh, sit the pocket? Well, uh, um, kind of depends on how the race goes. Uh, but going into the race, uh, we'll probably, uh, uh, probably race him off the pace uh, with cover and uh, just try to draft along as far as we can and hopefully uh, to outkick him through the stretch. You know, in a race going for uh, that much money, there's somebody usually... Uh, you know, making a race out of it, and uh, he, he's got some gate speed, but he's not really quick off the gate, which, you know, uh, might get me in trouble if I try to try to be too, too okay. aggressive with him. All right, we'll take more calls for Dave Miller, and of course, so we still have to answer the Hollywood quiz for dinner for two at the Big M. As we go to break, let's take a look at the first elimination for the graduate tomorrow night, defending horse of the year. Gala Blue Chip returns to the Big M, post two, six to five, morning line favorite, takes on Riverboat King, Art Dialing, and Noble Ability, the fastest this season, 149-1. Track Talk Live at the Big M continues a great day of weather, but we've got some showers in the forecast for Saturday and some cooler weather as we get into the weekend and into our Sunday afternoon racing. Uh, we've got a couple on the line now that uh, might have the answer to our quiz. Uh, Caitlin, go ahead. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Falcon's Future? Nope, no, Falcon's Future was maybe the best horse of a couple years. That was a year or two before, wasn't it, Dave? Yeah, he was a couple years before him. So I'll give you a little hint. It was a couple years after that. All right, uh, uh, Dan, I think, has, the, uh, uh, has a guess, anyway, for the Hollywood Hayden quiz. Yeah, hi, guys. Uh, the answer to the trivia question is uh, Cinder Lane Sam. That's right. That's oh, right. yeah. Post 10, finished fifth, 26 to 1. It was 12 to 1 on the board. But I guess he couldn't get into the race, right? Then. Yeah, he had a 10-0, and I, I took him right off the gate, and uh, he said last the whole way, and uh, 
never was in it and luckily got up to be fifth. Any Congratulations there to uh, Dan. Wins dinner for two at the Metal Ansa for guessing the quiz. How about some of those, those great Ohio horses? Um, that normally doesn't translate to Grand Circuit, like a Chris Sabra or something like that. They become very nice horses, but doing it here and doing it in, in, you know, all over the country is a different story. All right, right. But I, I tell you what, uh, uh, as far as Cinder Lane Sam, when I, I, I really believe uh, he, he would have been competitive. I don't think he... It could have beat him on a day-to-day -day basis, but uh, he was uh, he was probably about the strongest Ohio horse that I ever raced. All right, another call. Ted, go ahead. Uh, Ted's on the line. Uh, a question or a comment for uh, Dave Miller. Yeah, Dave, how you doing? Good. I've seen a lot of drivers be winning the race on the outside or in the middle of the track, and then they go to, like, the rail and get hung up. Uh, what the f*** I don't understand. Well, uh, um, I'm not for sure. Uh, um, what do you mean? If they're winning the race, I wouldn't see why they would go to the inside. If they're making a move and uh, run out of, you know, run out of room, then they might try to go to the inside, or the horse might veer to the inside. But uh, I think if uh, if anybody's got a clear path and they're winning, I think they would uh, stay to the outside. The idea, of course, to save ground if you can, but uh, well, yeah, you know, if you can, but if, yeah, well, that's true. You know, there's a lot of a uh, lot of things can happen there, but uh, um, I'm not for sure. And sometimes you're forced wide. Uh, true, that's true. That's also true. Also. When you when you drive more often, do you in turn become more patient? Well, yeah, you know, uh, especially uh, out here, you know, you have such a if you got a good flow and uh, you got the long stretch, you can have a tendency to sit a little longer there. Who are some of your favorite trainers to drive for? Uh, really, uh, it, it's that's hard to say. Uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of lot of good trainers out here and usually have their horses ready. Usually have them rigged up. Uh, um, I'd like to drive for all of them. Have you had a problem, though, with winning maybe with a horse and getting off that horse next week because you have a commitment to someone, maybe a Virgil Morgan or someone, Jeff Cox from Ohio? Does that, has that come up in the past? Yeah, that's happened to me, you know, and I hate, I hate having that happen to me, but uh, sometimes you're forced to, uh, to try to do the right thing, and it don't always work out for you. You're kind of a low-key guy. Do you think that helps? Do you think the horses uh, sense that? I, I don't know. Uh, they still uh, they still grab onto me and uh, fuss with me and everything else. Uh, I try to keep them quiet as I can, though. All right. Well, we'll have more of uh, Dave Miller and more of Track Talk Live as uh, we go to break here. The uh, top five from each of the two graduate eliminations come back for a final of worth over three hundred thousand dollars. Here's the second field, second elimination, race eight on Saturday. Space Shuttle, post five at two to one. Last year's fastest horse, one forty-seven four, takes on a powerful Perfect World Enterprises entry of Armbro Positive and Strong Scooter. And a reminder, you can now catch The Inside Track, our award-winning news magazine program, and it premieres tonight on CNA. It's now in its third year with Bob Hayden and Dave Brower, and you can see it on CNA at midnights on Friday. Bob, you've got a question? Yeah, I do. Uh, Dave, when you were uh, Cinder Lane Sam back in 95, you got married the same day and in the Meadowlands Pace at night, but last year you won a million-dollar Breeders' Crown. I want to know which race you felt more pressure going into. <laughs> uh, uh, definitely last year. Uh, I, I felt the uh, pressure uh, of uh, the Breeders' Crown all week long. After I seen the draw and see where he drew and see where Moneymaker was, I, I thought I had a shot, and, and uh, it, that worked on me. The, the first one uh, uh, wasn't really much pressure. I was just having fun. All right, uh, let's take a look at the Breeders' Crown from last year as uh, uh, Magician and uh, Moneymaker. Of course, uh, Magician right here on top, turning for home. Take us through the race. What do you think at this point here? Well, I, I, um, at this point, I, I thought we was in good shape. Uh, they, they rolled to the, to the half and three quarters pretty good, and uh, I got around uh, um, the horse that was out. Uh, I believe it was uh, Raphael Ambrosio. And, uh, Nicky Colco, I believe, gets up for second, but uh, Magician, uh, he, uh, we thought, a lot of us thought, he should have been trot of the year last year. What do you think? Well, I, I, you can't take uh, nothing away from Moneymaker. She's such a great horse, and uh, after uh, after what she'd done her whole career, then uh, finished up the way she did at Lexington. Uh, um, she she's, was a very very great horse, and uh, she deserved it. Hey, what about time you spend uh, preparing for a night's nice, the races? Do you look at replays? Do you read the program? How do you prepare to get ready for your 10, 11 drives a night? Uh, well, usually just uh, trying to study the program the best I can, and. Uh, uh, trying to figure out what I'm going to do before uh, I go out there, then just play it by ear from there. And uh, uh, you know, you got you, you'll you'll uh, see a horse do something that you you know keep in mind to help you out. A lot of years ago, about nine, ten years ago, they took out the hub rail, a lot of tracks, put pylons in. How how much of a factor is that then? Oh, that's a big plus, uh, the big safety plus. Uh, you know, uh, maybe nothing worse to get tangled up on that thing, and uh, you know, taking it out gives you a lot more room and takes that uh, takes that added. Uh, 
worry out of there. Dave, there's a list of some of your top horses. BJ's whirlwind. He he was uh, a small horse, but he had a real motor coming home. Yeah, BJ. He he was something else. He uh, he said he wasn't the biggest horse, and he he had uh, some some soreness troubles. But I, I tell you, he, he had put in a tremendous year for me. What a heart! You know, he had a big heart, and uh, he could go a long ways. You also had the uh, space shuttle a couple years ago, and then last year with Pierce, he went 47 and four. Did when you drove him at three, did you see that kind of potential in him? Yeah, he went the uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes uh, out here. Uh, I forget who he beat, but uh, they uh, he, they charged him 25 and I think three or four last quarter. I mean, he he was a very fast horse. Would you have liked to see possibly a, a money maker magician match race last year at any time when they were both at the top of their games? Obviously, would never happen. But yeah. do you like to see that? Um, I, I I really don't know. I mean, what I uh, she you know she beat us and uh, we beat her. Uh, you know, I, I I just leave it at that. Uh, she was a, she was a great horse. I. I can't say enough about her. Well, our thanks to Dave Miller. Great job so far, and good luck with the magician in 2001. We hope they see him very soon. And we've got a reminder for you that uh, Preakness Day is coming up on May 19th. Monarcos goes for the second jewel in the Triple Crown. And now the inside track can be watched on CNA. It premieres tonight. It's third year. Midnight's on Fridays on CNA. And we're back.